York, one of the biggest tourist hotspots in Britain. York combines a wealth of fascinating history with all the buzz of a contemporary city. With its superlative Gothic minster, its invented museums and its narrow meandering lanes reflecting its medieval street plan, it also has a solid infrastructure, from hotels and restaurants to open-top buses and sightseeing boats, and is also clearly a real city, buzzing with students and with a local life. York jumped onto the national stage with a bang in Roman times. Before then, it was a small marshy settlement of the locally dominant Celtic Brigantist tribe at the confluence of the Ouse and the Foss. Then in 71 AD, the Romans arrived and built a garrison from which to subdue the locals. Around it grew the town of Erboracum, which in due course became the capital of the Roman Empire's northern territories. From here, Hadrian masterminded the pacifying of the north and the building of his famous wall. Here it was too that Constantine was proclaimed emperor in 306 AD. York Minster, first built as a temporary wooden structure in 627 AD, destroyed and rebuilt many times over succeeding centuries and finally erected in its current splendid form from 1220 onwards, but not declared complete until its consecration in 1472, is one of England's great Gothic churches. It's all inspiringly grand, but also remarkably easy to comprehend, and with so many human scale wobbles that, on closer acquaintance, it becomes almost endearing. A full tour will take at least half a day, but could spark a love affair that will last you a lifetime. When the Romans withdrew their army from Britain in the 5th century AD, York was conquered by the Anglo-Saxons, who made it the capital of Kingdom of Northumbria Euphoric. Fast forward a couple of centuries, and in 867 AD, the city of York fell to the Vikings. They renamed it Jorvik, and it became the capital of the Viking-dominated Danelaw. The Hundred Year Occupation ended in 954 AD when York was regained by the Anglo-Saxon King Edred of Wessex. But the news arrived that Will William of Normandy had landed in the south. The exhausted English army returned to the south only to be defeated at the Battle of Hastings. Under the Norman rule, it started badly for York. The city was destroyed during William the Conqueror's ferocious harrying of the north, punishment for having had the temerity to oppose his occupation of the country. As the dust settled, however, York prospered. A new cathedral was built by the Norman Archbishop Thomas, starting in 1080, and this sparked the development of the city as the principal religious center of the north of England. didn't last. Tudor times brought economic recession caused by a downturn in the fortunes of the woolen industry, and the effects of the split with the Roman Catholic faith sparked by Henry VIII's desire to divorce Catherine of Aragon and Mary Anne Boleyn. The subsequent Northern Rebellion in support of the Pope and the Catholic faith, the Pilgrimage of Grace, was brutally suppressed. York also suffered from the plundering of the monastic houses during the dissolution of the monasteries which followed. Mm -hmm. 
York's regrettable tendency to pick the wrong side continued during Stuart times. First, it was involved in the 1605 Catholic plot to blow up the Houses of Parliament. Guy Fawkes was born and brought up in the city. Then it strongly supported King Charles I during the English Civil War. In 1644, combined parliamentary and Scottish forces besieged York. Royalist forces under Prince Rupert came to the rescue, driving the besiegers out. However, not satisfied with that achievement, the prince pursued the superior parliamentary forces west of the city, then was routed at the Battle of Marston Moor. York was left defenseless and owes its survival to an accident of birth. One of the parliamentary commanders, Lord Fairfax, was from York and stopped his victorious troops setting fire to the city. During the 18th century, York's prestige went into something of a decline. The focus of the Yorkshire woolen industry moved west and south as the search for power took it first into the Pennine Hills, then into the west and south Yorkshire coal fields. The city remained, however, an important social centre for the middle class and upper classes, and the townhouses and public buildings remain an important attraction for visitors. Things looked up in the coming of the railways in the 19th century. York became an important rail centre and also through the Town Tree and Terry dynasties, a great manufacturer of confectionery. By the time these two industries went into 20th century decline, York's future prosperity was assured by its burgeoning tourist industry. Nairsbrook Castle, perched high above the River Nid, it stands in ruins. It is well worth visiting, but more for its atmosphere and its splendid views than in its own right.
Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Goodbye.